Saving money cannot be cool. It's 2020. Why would someone want to save money? Well, in today's video, I'm going to share how I've managed to save about 70% of my income these past two years. Some of the strategies that I implemented in my life that you can use to help make you feel like a great saver that allow you to feel like you're positioning yourself for your future. Now, I know saving it might not be your strong suit. Saving is very hard. I'm going to implement these strategies that help change and reform the way I look at money and allow you to live comfortably and also enjoy your life while saving money for your financial future do not go anywhere because 78 percent of americans live paycheck to paycheck this is something that brings a lot of fear into my life which allows me to make these decisions that change my economic future so before we get started if you have not yet subscribed to the youtube channel the subscription button is below that would mean a lot also if you find value in this video if you think this is a great video if you find like this really resonates with you if you could hit that like button for me that would mean a lot because i hope that i can inspire and also share this message with a lot of people so before we get started i want to share my story on how i got to this point of saving 70 percent of my income and break down six to seven ways that you can do it too it's actually super easy and it's actually very fun if you are motivated and understanding that this thing can actually change your life. So number one, it came down to the goal setting. When I was first starting out, when I was seven, eight, trying to save money, I had a piggy bank. And I think goals are very important, especially financially. If you want to have a clear goal, or if you don't know what you're saving for, then what is the purpose? So I was young, I was going around mowing yards with my dad, I was selling at yards. I was doing random stuff as a young teen because I wanted to fill my piggy bank up. And I think that was a very inspiring inspirational or also very like subconscious thought that allowed me to first off start the habits of saving because so many people in 2020 live paycheck to people um, so many people live to buy things the flex we live in an instant gratification culture which means it is so easy to swipe that credit card it is so easy to continue to get in debt and something that I've learned through my process and my career working as a financial representative underneath a financial advising firm is that I've met with people and I'm going to share the people's experience that I met with that can really open your mind and allow you to keep on track that could change your life so I'm going to share a little bit about the people that I met and the big conclusion that I've made once I've met these people. So number one is to have a clear financial goal. What are you doing now? What are you saving for? And how can you limit um, the things that you're doing that may not be targeted to that goal? So for me, my goal was to save a certain amount of dollars each day. $100 a day is something that I want to do every day. Make $100, $200, go back into my pocket every day, which can allow me to position myself to you know stay on track and to save more money. So number one is seems very generic but is to have a clear goal if you don't know what you're saving for if you don't know what that money is going to towards and why you're gonna save um, it's just so easy to get caught up in buying things buying more we want bigger we want better and the thing is we are hurting our financial future if we continue to spend continue to get deeper in debt and that is a fear of mine the pain is what I am trying to avoid in the future I've been from a family where you know, I've seen people who are extremely wealthy. I've met people that are extremely wealthy. And it comes down to good habits. So number one is to have a clear vision and to have good habits. Implement these habits every day, which is going to put you one step ahead towards getting that goal. Number two is something that I did every day after work, the nine to five in college when I was just going to class or when I was working back in high school for a farm or for a medical waste company is that I had a side hustle. These past few years, a side hustle has propelled me um, being a landscaping lawn care owner, there's still ways and opportunities to make more money when you are not focusing on the business, doing fun things, wherever you are in your life is going to allow you to make more money. So let's say you're working a nine to five. I'll keep it very contextual. What can you do after that five when you get off to make more money? Not only will it give you more confidence going forward, it'll allow you to just feel really good about saving. We, we think about saving as pinching pennies, not having money to spend on the things that we want. But if you can set a daily savings habit if you can set a certain dollar amount towards how much you want to save and if you can make that money during the week at your nine to five job then what you do or what you make on your side hustle for me it was mowing lawns when I was getting started flipping things on eBay going on Facebook reselling things asking neighbors how can I make money or how can I actually help them and they're gonna pay me finding a way to make an extra two three hundred dollars a week can really change your financial future. Yes, you might not want to work, but the thing is the more you make, the more easy it is to spend. But the problem is in 2020, or even with people that I know, my friends, my family, is the more they make is the more they spend. And this is a point that I wanted to share a part of my career. So some of the people that I've met with these past summer, 
working as a financial representative, I know people making 40,000, 30,000, 200, 500,000 dollars. And the story is I spoke with a lady who was making 250,000 dollars a year in a sales position while working for the government. She was absolutely crushing. Imagine what you would do if you made 250,000 a year back in your pocket before an uh, annual bonus. And she had 100 50, $150 in her checking account and $1,500 in her savings account because she spent all her money or you're spending all your money once you get the paycheck. And this is something that I avoided. So I was saving, I was paying very disciplined to a goal and I was finding extra money to make. And that leads me to the point, it's not about how much money you make, it's about how much money you save. And I've continued to live by that principle every day every week and every month because that's what I want to live by and that's what I know is going to help prepare me to achieve something great financially in the future. Third is to start investing. This is what I did about three years ago. I opened up a Robinhood account because I knew that my savings account, I knew that how much I was getting in a return and an average savings account was not giving me something, an ROI positive after inflation, after the cost of just keeping my money in the bank. Not only was the bank making so much money off my money, I was getting screwed. So what did I do? I started investing in the stock market. Finding a way to position your dollars is something that helped me. Not only do I feel like I'm saving more, but I feel like my savings dollars are growing at a higher rate and getting a great return. So simple savings investments, um, whether if you're doing Acorns, for me, Robinhood, uh, I invested right into index, the SPY, the S&P 500 um, ETF. Is this something that is super simple that allows your money to grow in a safe place with the market, correlated to the market, but allows you to get a higher rate of return, which gives you the confidence when you see your money is growing in an investment account when it's not growing in a savings account. So diversify your savings habits and that allowed me to just really save more money and also seem really strategic with how I'm allocating my dollars. Fourth is coming in with sacrifices. Now sacrifices, this comes down to a personal preference. Who likes enjoying sacrifices? We all want to have more money. We all want to uh, live a lavish life. We all want to feel fancy at times. We're humans, I get it. But the thing is, I had to make sacrifices when I was going through not only college, but also through personal habits that I was acquiring. Not only did I stop eating out less, not only did I have time to pack my lunch or not eat out, these small things that add up crazy, but I also lived at home while college. College was expensive. I was able to be fortunate enough to pay for my community college out of pocket. Twelve hundred semester is absolutely no money. But the thing is, I see so many people going off to college, spending so much money, not only on college, but the bar scene, the living scene. Everything is super expensive. So I positioned myself. It was not fun. It was not as eventful as it was to live on a college campus and just have an expensive dorm to uh, live in this great place. But I learned to live in a small apartment. I learned to do these subtle things that allow me to feel great about myself. Not only was I saving money, but I was able to kind of get into the dirt, get into the grind. And this allowed me to just think generically. I was buying th simple things, not going for the name brands. And also what I can say is that I did not buy out of the desire. I bought out of need. The thing is I see so many people buying things just to have the new iPhone. I have an iPhone uh, 8. I, I have random things that are just outdated because if I'm buying something, I'm buying it personally for myself. And I see so many people buying a branded hoodie, a branded car, just to feel good about themselves, just to have confidence in their life. And that's something that I became very unemotional about. Every purchasing decision that I continue to buy or something that I want to purchase for myself is strictly for myself. Not only am I doing this for myself and it gives me self-esteem and confidence in who I am, but I knew that everything that I buy is true to me and I don't care what other people have to think. And that was something that I had to learn. That was something I had to tune out in my ears and I was willing to take that sacrifice because I know deeper down the road that I have to do this now to possess myself to save money for a house, to save money for the things that I want in the future to continue to invest rather than spending things, buying things that I don't need, allocating dollars that are just unworthy to my financial picture. So that's kind of what I did. The sacrifices, the grind, the dirt is what I picked in with the side hustles and the sacrifices. I was saving a lot of money. Now it came down to my income. How much was I making? A thousand, two thousand, three thousand dollars, four thousand, even five thousand dollars a week was something that I saw based on how my business was growing, how my side hustles were accumulating. But I knew that I needed to save 70%. So no matter what you're making, you have to put the budget on how much you're making um, and track your expenses. And that is number five. Track a budget. A budget is absolutely foundational to my success saving money. 
I knew how much money I was bringing in every week. A lot of people just live paycheck to paycheck. They see their dollars and they don't know how much the subscriptions are. They don't know how much your electric is. They don't know how much their rent is with all these little utilities. You have to track those things. So I was bringing in a certain amount of dollars and I was understanding that, hey, I wanted to have fun money. I could still live fun. I could still do the things. I could still go out to the bar with my friends because I knew, let's say on week one, I had 75 or $150 to spend if I wanted to save my 70% of my income. I put that money to investments. I put that money to my savings account. I was left for $150, let's say over for the week. So what did I do? I kept cash. Cash is a great tool for so many people. It is so easy to swipe, swipe, swipe. You don't know how much you're spending. It's easy to track that way, but if you go out to a place, if you spend a weekend with $150 in your wallet and you say, hey, I can only spend $150 on my groceries this week or on my beers or whatever you're doing, laser tag, anything fun or on golf, you can still do those things because at the end of the day, if you have $1 left of your fun money, you did it and you saved 70% of your income and you had the fun when you can. So many people are so overwhelmed. They don't know how to do this without living so frugally, but it's all about portion control. When someone gains a weight, what do they say? It's about your portions. It's similar to finances and something that I've implemented into my financial life. Understand that you can have fun, understand that you can still live free, but also saving money because that is the best feeling. And lastly, at number six is a live minimal. I don't think or I don't possess things for reasons of not knowing why I want it. Everything that I had in my life, everything that I purchased these past two to three years, I had a purpose for them. There's so many times where we get caught up buying things to fill space. We get caught up to buy things that are just unnecessary. It is so easy to go on Amazon to buy things just to have. And that was something I absolutely cut out of my financial diet. I didn't need that in my life, so I didn't buy it. So it comes down to a lot of different priorities. If you understand, if you have a clear vision, if you understand you can still have fun and also understand that the money coming in has to be controlled, you can be on track to saving a lot of money. And I think it's very encouraging to understand why it's important to save money. And no matter if you're saving 20, 30%, it's okay where you are now. But if you want to have real growth, if you want to save money, it is untalked about in 2020. As my generation continues to just tack on more college loans, to live in credit card debt, saving money is not so glamorous. But that's something I'm trying to trigger or something I'm trying to kind of evoke out of our generation. Because if you save money, you can save money for a house. You can save money for a business that you want to grow. You can save money for your future and you can save money for your kids and your financial generation. Generation. For me, I've come from a background of you know struggling and seeing people in my family that are having trouble troubles with their money, and that's something I continue to think about every day. I want to save my dollars. I want to deploy my dollars. I want to save as much as I can so that I can be a foundational for my financial, my last name, my generation success in the future is from my habit. So guys, I hope that helps you. I hope I give you a clear picture about how you can save money no matter where you are in your financial journey. If you were just starting out, find a regulatory goal. Set something on a whiteboard. When I was just getting started, I wanted this amount on a whiteboard. I would wake up, I'd look at that whiteboard, I'd track my expenses. If I was not making enough money to save that, guess what I did? I went right to a side hustle. I went to ways to make money for that week so I could save that 70% of my income to feel good, to be on track, to changing my financial future, and to position myself better for the, for the long term. So that could be a lot of info. Let me know what you guys think. If you have not yet subscribed by this point, I would mean a lot to me. Also, would love to hear your comments, questions, concerns. How can I help you? Leave a comment below. This is a long journey. This is a tedious process. But if you're mentally focused, if you're mentally locked in, if you understand that, hey, I'm going to go somewhere and do something, but I'm not going to be the guy that's just randomly spending money, have a position or have a purpose behind every dollar that you have in your pocket, you're going to feel great and you're going to start understanding the importance of saving and you're going to see not only your savings account grow, you're going to see your investments grow, you're going to see your confidence grow, you're going to see the things around you become glamorous because you're probably implementing good habits which are leading to financial success, personal success, and hopefully professional success. So no matter where you are, stay focused, go ahead and go get it. I will continue to track this and keep you guys updated on how I'm continuing to do this, but have that piggy bank, have a way to put that money away and you're going to feel great about yourself. So guys, I hope to see you in the next video. This has been fun. Um, go out there, save money, feel good and go out there and don't buy things for other people. Buy things for yourself, for your happiness and your joy. And I bet you what, you're going to save an extra hundred bucks this week. Good luck and go out there and continue to crush. I love you guys. Thank you for tuning in. I'll see you in the next one. Peace out. Bye.